Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here, and today I have a bit of a different video. I thought this would be cool. This was a game I recently played, and I laned against a rank 1590 Lena player, and I actually thought, and this is not me trying to slight this player, I don't know who he is, I have nothing against him or her. I, I just felt like his laning was very underwhelming, to the point where I actually thought that this game was quite imbalanced, and I want to talk about why I thought that. Now, I actually rewatched the replay, and I realized that he wasn't doing that bad, there's just a couple things here and there that I would have changed within his gameplay, but he still definitely deserves his rank. He's at his rank for a good reason. But nonetheless, we're going to be looking at the game in just normal speed, basically, even slower than that. Usually I'm speeding through games. Get it? <laughs> and uh, before we get into the game, if you could smash the like button, just click it, little, little thumbs up, pause the video, two seconds, help out the channel. If we could get to 2000 likes, that would be ridiculous. And now, let's get into the video. Oh wait, psych, I forgot. <laughs> Not everyone has a Game Leap sub yet. Alright, alright, alright. This is the last time I'm stopping you, but if you don't have a Game Leap sub, you're living life wrong. You're only gonna be here for another, what, 60 years, 50 years? You could die tomorrow. Why would you want to die without a Game Leap sub? Everyone's gonna know you at your funeral that you didn't have one. That's pretty embarrassing, so get in while you still can. Click the link down below, and I hope to see you there. Alright, so in this game in particular, I was playing Pangalier against Lina. Definitely a matchup I don't think is like horrible for Pangalier. After all, in the mid game, Pangalier can be very good against Lina, disarming her and chain stunning her. Any hero with gap close is just good against Lina mid game. It's usually the case. Lina has to play very careful until she has BKB. And so I was fine with that matchup. But for the lane, it can be very hard for Pango, especially at level 1, level 2. Can you outplay her? Yes, and you'll see a couple situations where I'm able to here. But for the most part, it could be a hard matchup. Now, and the first thing I want to mention is he actually takes a stun, which in the past I've, I usually would have agreed with. So this is where you're always updating your information on Dota and your opinion on Dota. I don't think the stun's necessarily bad. One thing I would say is that the first thing that allowed me to win this lane is that I got the block onto my high ground. It's been something I've been thinking about more and more that I didn't put an emphasis on in the past that I want to now. Getting a good block, especially in a losing matchup or a hard winning matchup, is huge. If it's some easy matchup, or like, sorry, not easy. If it is an even matchup, let's say like DK versus Quap at level one, where DK has armor and Quap like can't do any damage to him. You know, one of those matchups where it's just even. The block doesn't matter too much, but for the most part it does. And so in this case, I'm able to pull creep aggro under the tower. And in my opinion, this is actually beneficial. And let's understand why. So you can actually use this as a tactic and not just do it accidentally. The reason why this can be beneficial is because now I have a creep advantage. And what that tells me is that I can go aggressive when he has to commit for some sort of creep. I don't know which one it will be in the moment, but some sort of creep. The next thing that allowed me to win the lane was a little bit of nice movement, so after I missed the CS like a boss, what I'm really looking for is a potential stun from Alina. Now, as I said, I, I actually don't think you should take stun anymore, I think you should be taking your nuke. Reason being is because your nuke allows you to secure creeps without overextending. That's really the main concept to understand. The stun it does about the same damage on a lower cooldown and it stuns. It even costs the same mana, so like, you might be asking, oh, why not take the stun? It's the range. It's it's all the range. It's really the fact that it's range. And it actually hits every creep, which might sound like a bad thing. It's like, oh, I'm pushing the wave. Pushing the wave is something that a lot of players have wrong in their heads. They're like, ah, oh, every time I push away, that's a bad thing. In the mid lane, it can be absolutely a great thing. It can be a good thing. Like here, I'm intentionally pulling the wave under my tower to hopefully get an opportunity where I can pressure the Lina at least... Uh, able to secure the creeps and that's what i get here uh, i'm able to secure these creeps and then most importantly what am i going to note this right this and this and obviously in the moment i'm not doing some major mathematical equation i'm not running the numbers through my head it's just experience at this point and so i know he's going to commit for this i'm going to commit for this and all in all because i have more creeps than him i can swash across clip him hit level two which i scale up and then i can start hitting him now unfortunately for me this guy is the goat I also should have juked this stun. It was very bad of me. I would have I would have done so much damage here if I juked this stun. Uh, because I could have hit him and body blocked him the entire way back. It would have been insane. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm a bot, so I got hit by the stun. GG. But that's actually kind of the reason why I thought he was a little bit lower rank. But now that I, when I rewatch it, I don't think that's what it was. I think it was just the fact that I got a good block, pulled the wave under my tower, and capitalized when I could have. So I think it was actually me making uh, quite a few correct plays. And that's not me trying to... You know, toot my own horn, I'm just saying it from a very objective perspective. That actually sounds cool, objective perspective. And you'll see right here another example of this, where the range creep is dying, and this is the benefit of having a long range nuke, where he doesn't right now, so he can't really, uh, until he gets level 2, he can't secure range creeps from far away. 
which means he has to step up, and when you have to step up, that's when you can get punished. It's as simple as that. And so right here, I saw him step up. I hit a really nice swashbuckle. To be fair, I actually ended up going under the tower, uh, which was obviously not too good. I probably should have just swashbuckled from here to here if I had to replay this. You know, Pango noob here. But I should have swashbuckled like this. And then he would have had the step up. I'd be in melee range of him, and I would punish him the entire way there. And now I still get end up getting a decent amount of damage. But another thing I would say is he just didn't hit me much. I feel like, you know, the thing about Lina against Pango is what she wants to do is just Q, 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 and hit you as much as humanly possible when she hits level 2. And what's funny is she doesn't even take her E at level 2, which is just horrendous. I I don't know why he does this, to be honest. I really don't. I, I, it confused me in the moment. I'm like, why does he have both of his nukes? Because you just don't have... I mean, you do have mana, but it's not like you want to use both spells. You would rather use one spell and just get insane value out of Fury Soul, right? Why, like, if you're theoretically, like, think about it. If you're trying to win the lane, why would you try to win the lane with two nukes that both cost mana instead of taking a passive that basically you get to use two spells when you cast only 100 mana, which is so much better. And so all in all, I just felt like he wasn't nuking enough even here. Um, in my opinion, if he wants to really, like, put some pressure on me, he could hit me a bit more. So I pull aggro, you know, we pull aggro. What he could do next is he could actually hit the rage creep. So now that he has his Q, what he can do is he can walk to here hit this, cue it, and then back off a little bit. And that would put me under some pressure, right? Because it would push out the range creep, and then I would potentially start taking the melee creeps. But instead, he nuked in a very incorrect way, which allowed me to secure a deny onto the range creep. And so, all in all, I, I felt like he was just messing a little bit up with the creeps. He wasn't nuking as much as he should have. And usually in most Dota games, this won't actually punish you, right? Like, what he's doing wrong, it's not going to necessarily win him the game but it won't lose him the game and i think that's like a big difference between you know bracket to bracket it's every little thing you do that slightly wins you to lane and funny enough he was definitely a very competent player something that i would note about him which you guys should note as well is even though he was having a bad game he hasn't died to me and he's being very efficient funny enough he actually had two kills this was really what spiraled him back into this game obviously the two kills are <laughs> not on me it's not on your boy speed because i'm the best player in the world but Yes, he did end up getting two kills, which did spiral him back into the game. It's a great rotation. It really is. They were diving the tower. He executes it well. Ulti's onto the drow. Did miss a stun, so it wasn't really perfect execution. There was actually a few misclicks here and there. But that's a very heads-up rotation. It was a very heads-up TP, very heads-up rotation that was based upon, uh, you know, a dive, not just some random movement, right? It actually made a lot of sense. All in all, though, this game obviously uh, does not go in his favor. If we look at the end results, it was actually quite the stomp. Ends in 27 minutes, and let's take a look why. Because obviously the game's not out of control yet. We're certainly winning. Uh, both of our side lanes won. Not hard, but they won, right? They just, you know, slight advantage in each lane. And this is where the game really turns. And I've been trying to stress this to people more and more. Guys, if you are a bottle hero and you're playing the mid lane, it's very, very crucial that this has nothing to do with Pengo, right? This could be Lina, this could be Lesh, it really doesn't matter. And same thing with everything I just taught you about in lane with nuking range creeps and shoving the lane under tower. Don't watch this video and say it's Pango. This video is not about Pango at all. It has nothing to do with Pango. It just has to do with factors that Pango happens to have that, you know, a lot of other heroes have too. And now this is a big play that I like. I go back to base and because I'm a bottle hero, right? So I go back to base, I farm my way back to base, I bottle up and then I say, is there a play to be made? And in this case, I said, okay, I think I can kill bottom. It's not too easy of a kill, right? It's a juggernaut. You're going to see I leave with my Q. Obviously, I don't want him to be able to spin too early. And he ends up TPing out. But it's not the end of the world because I shut the jug down. Also, now here, I'm going to be able to roll on to the, to the Rubik, pick up that kill, and secure my Gyro better game. And most importantly, this is where the game really turned, in my opinion. This was, like, really the biggest moment in the game, in my opinion, in terms of, uh, you know, the outcome. The Lina ends up going on me here, but your boy obviously has very stat-efficient items. Because that's what we do here. Stat-efficient items. Raindrops, wand cost efficient items and now the lena actually stays around i assume she would back off but she overcommits, which she, I, I understand why she was trying to blow up the co-op co had a really nice sidestep to avoid uh the disable and because of that we pick up the kill onto the lena obviously lena is not very good against gyro mid game because of rocket it's just a very you can be good against gyro if you blow him up if you catch him off guard this matchup really goes either way if lena gets caught it's gg if Lena catches, it's also GG, so it's all about vision, all about who gets in first. And so yeah, we're able to pick up the kill on top of that. It obviously spirals completely out of control, pick up the Rubik as well. And now we have a 2k lead, all the way from a 1k lead. So that's why it's so important to rotate off a bottle. You notice when I go into that fight, I have full resources. I have every spell up, full mana, full bottle, everything I could possibly ask for. And funny enough, I'm actually going to do it right away again. I farm my way back to base, I even help my drought 
hit a couple creeps, right? I secure her game, then I say, okay, I think I can kill top. Now, unfortunately, this Ench is an absolute god. I don't know how, but she backs off at the perfect time. Uh, just kidding. She was getting bounty runes, which is a bit unfortunate. But yeah, that's about all I have to say for this video. The next thing is, I really would like to say that I think the Delina played fine. You know, she ended up being 3-1 going into the mid game, but very early bots timing. She's buying clarities, buying a bottle, refilling it, getting bounties, making good rotations. It's just, that's the difference, guys. That is how you have to look at Dota. I don't think this Lina is a bad player. I think she's a great player. She's even a higher level than me right now. And that's not, you know, through any fault of my own. I, I've been roaming a bit more than her. But that just goes to show it's the little things that separate. It's the fact that Lina, in my opinion, could have laned quite a bit better. And that's relative, right? It's relative. Uh, because from a lot of players, how she laned is like the best they'll ever lane in their life, right? <laughs> Funny enough, it would be their best game of all time how she played this game. Um, and that's that's the thing about Dota. You always can get better. I always can get better, right? I make these videos not to, not to boast. I make these videos and they help me learn as well. I really mean that. Like when I get to go through my thoughts and make them into a video form, I learn from them. And I hope you guys can kind of take the same perspective. And we'll end it on this beautiful fight. Look at this roll. Wow. Some people call me Luki Luki as I miss Alina. Yeah, some people call me that. I don't know if you guys knew, but oh, wow. Two-man swash. Even the bottle charge onto the tusk. Dang, son. This guy's good. Wow. All right, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned quite a bit. Uh, this is definitely more of an advanced video. So if you understood what I was saying, you are a high IQ player. <laughs> but yeah, remember guys, everything I'm teaching you will take a while to implement. You will not hop into your next game and all of a sudden be a rank 500 laner that's just not gonna happen you have to use and implement the ideas i'm giving you today for a while also look at a smoke gank smoke's broken <laughs> but uh remember that guys right remember that it's gonna take a while i have to tell this to all my students all the time and i'll tell it to you as well as you guys are all my students as well it will take a while getting good is about having the right ideas and then executing them until they are purely intuition until you do not have to think about them anymore that is how you get good and uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and sub. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dota or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general, and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there, and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes. They skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below. Get your discount right now by clicking the link. Sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there, and I hope to see you there right now, so click it, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.